As soon as the land of any country has all become private property, the landlords, like all other men, love to reap where they never sowed, and demand a rent even for its natural produce. A couple of nights ago, I was sent an email from work saying that I will no longer be allowed to work on campus and will have to work from home for the foreseeable future. But as long as I have students who are healthy enough to sit in front of a computer in their lounge room, I will continue to have work. This is not such a big deal for me, as I honestly prefer to work from home and I'm still receiving an income. Plus, when I do go to work, I often have to wait for students in a waiting room that happens to be the same waiting room where sick people wait to see the university doctor. Recently, it's been full, so obviously I don't want to be exposed to coughing and sneezing patients. However, many workers aren't so lucky. Anybody working in travel-related industries are going to face a tough time over the next 6 to 12 months, or possibly even more. Qantas, for example, will be cutting up to two-thirds of their staff, many of them without pay. Many workers in the travel industry are being asked to stay at home, but unfortunately, they won't be receiving a salary unless they have lots of leave saved up. Obviously, this is going to wreak havoc on the economy and I think a recession is pretty much unavoidable. From a legal point of view, companies are fully in their rights to stand down workers, regardless of the worker's work status. It's not just casuals at risk. You could be a permanent full-time employee and still be stood down. Under the Fair Work Act 2009, Section 524, any employee, whether full-time, part-time or casual, can be stood down without pay if they can't do useful work due to either industrial action, a breakdown of machinery or equipment, or the big one, a stoppage of work for which the employer can't reasonably be held responsible. That's what's being cited in the current crisis. There's no time limit to these stand-downs. As long as the crisis is ongoing, a company can continue to ask its workers not to come in. Despite the economic hardships that many of us Australians are facing, my landlord decided that now is a good time to raise the rent. He's such a nice man. I'm not exactly sure what he's thinking. I suppose he could just be greedy and doesn't really care about me or any of his other tenants. He's probably more interested in his return on investment. Or perhaps he is struggling financially too. I suppose if he's got a lot of his money tied up in other investments and the stock market, he might just be feeling a bit cash poor at the moment. Either way, he wants more of my money. Unfortunately, he doesn't seem too interested in fixing the place. Here are some bushes that are growing up into the eaves and gutters. Despite repeated requests to the real estate agent, they never ever get trimmed. The downpipes are broken, but again, they've never been fixed. This fence was almost falling over, despite them sending a person out to fix it. I don't know, would you call that fixed? A small gust of wind would blow it over. When it rains, a muddy sludge comes in from the roof. They have sent out a couple of plumbers to take a look, but again, nothing seems to be done about it. I can only assume the owner is just not interested in spending any more money on the place. To be fair, over the last few years, we've had a number of different owners and a number of different agents. I'm a bit confused as to which combination we're currently dealing with. Obviously, the real estate agent's job is to keep the owner happy. If they keep asking him to spend more money, he's either going to get angry at the agent or angry at me. Consequently, I'm feeling a bit of pressure not to complain too much. However, the owner seems to forget that we could always choose to move out. If that happened, he'd have to find somebody else to rent the place. Does he really think he could rent it out with so many problems? I doubt it. He'd have to fix it all anyway. Unfortunately for us, there aren't many other rental options at the moment. Other places are either too expensive or extremely shoddy. It's not just me having rental problems. Due to recent job losses, people across Australia are struggling to pay their rent and are facing eviction. There are calls for the government to step in and put a ban on all evictions due to economic hardship, at least during this current crisis. Currently, it's up to individual landlords to show some empathy and compassion, so it's a bit of a lucky dip for tenants really. If you're unlucky enough to be evicted, you could well be put on a blacklist, making it even harder to find new accommodation in the future. It's not just individuals facing eviction. Small businesses are also struggling to pay their rent due to low foot traffic. Will landlords show a bit of compassion, or will they keep on insisting on their monthly rental check? Hopefully, they realise that keeping their existing tenants afloat is better than an empty shop. 
The Reserve Bank of Australia has gone into emergency mode if they weren't there already. The cash rate has been slashed to a record low of 0.25%, the lowest the RBA are willing to take it. This is it when it comes to interest rate cuts. Consequently, the RBA are preparing to implement their first ever quantitative easing program. Basically, that will involve buying up government bonds and providing cheap loans to Australian banks. The Australian dollar has continued its sharp decline recently, reaching its lowest point in over 18 years. It's currently sitting at around 58 US cents. Anyway, that's the current situation. I've been forced to work from home, at least I'm getting paid. My rent is going up, the economy is tanking, and the government are trying their best to stop everything from imploding. All because of a single microorganism. It's kind of funny really. It just goes to show you how frail human civilization really is. Thanks for watching.